know how many people actually watched this when I posted it, but you should watch this if you're actually interested in anti-cheat technology. Good anime, by the way. We were going to look at the patch notes, weren't we? Uh, changes in feedback. We want to see this. What does this say? Oh, we heard you. Good. I love you, Laperza. I love you. Event visibility player agency in the event, which is population, I assume. Oversight that had unintended negative impact on player behavior. Personal contribution effort. Effects. Uh, oh. As a result of adding personal rewards for participation, we got some undesired player behavior. Hmm, like ghost capping and stacking one side. While our capture rate, defend rate, player deaths, and mean playtime are all up. From last week, the average number of deaths per player per successful capture decreased by 11%. Rampant ghost capping, maybe. What about fights where it's just one side raping the other? Long-term, our ideal solution is to scale all objective rewards with effort and risk, such that players are greatly rewarded for challenging encounters. Good. And they are rewarded little for effortless one. Also good, which takes into account Big Pop, I hope. We're in a better defining what a successful defense is so that it's more intuitive and less exploitable. What? Capping back and forth instantly? <laughs> uh, I, I really don't know why they can't use the XP system. XP system would definitely be very uh, good for what they're looking forward to. Looking for. They could use the XP system and modify it so it's more objective based. Then tie it into the WDS system. Or turn one into the other. You could just erase the XP system and make it a world domination score or something like that. They're going to make defenses more rewarding than attacks. What? This, oh my god, people are just going to camp. Means there'll be cheese more. Trying to encourage more fight creation. You have to actually encourage people for fighting, not just for... Yeah, so they swapped values with attack and defense. They didn't give personal rewards more or less because it's more... Current rewards are more most beneficial to free players. 
They wanted to make sure it's tuned before they give out decent stuff. Oh, if you guys want to look at this, by the way, while I'm reading it, you can look at it too. Maybe I should post that link. That's, you can reward people, like I said, you can make it more objective-based lockjaw. Like, uh, increase the points for captures, uh, successful defenses, basically uh, making the the system more um, flexible for what's happening in and around people. Not just for the end result, which is a capture of a base or a defense of a base. What defines the capture and the defense and what it takes to get there is what really matters on a personal level and for making a good battle. And of course, the end result still matters, which is what you can go for. But you have to make it profitable to get there. Elusive Firth faction. Does not exist? What? It's not just one fourth faction is not just one person. It's like the fourth faction phenomena is like when a bunch of people all hop on one side so that it snowballs into a win. They really should be looking like it doesn't look like they're analyzing. They do have statistics available apparently, but it doesn't look like they're analyzing right. Weird as that sounds. Like they really should be looking at the amount of people that hop on to the same faction, not specific people in general. Like, you're not out to punish the person switching factions to get on the winning side. You got, you have to look for people all hopping onto a winning side and making a snowball into a complete and utter win because of population. Cap the point, guys. Guys, just cap the point. Yeah, but like the fourth faction, so like fourth faction you don't have to get rid of as like in and of itself. Like it would be nice if people were limited to one player, one faction per server, not one player, one faction per server. But you don't necessarily need to do that to make WDS work. Like the reason people, like the, the root of the problem of people switching to a fourth faction strategy to get on the winning side is because they're stuck. Uh, they want the points, they want to win. So, like, you have to encourage people for losing. You have to make it so the... I'm not, I, I've am i long since given up on posting to forums, politician. So, like, just stuff like that. It just It's either going to turn into a bitch fest or it'll turn into... Uh, like, you get a lot of... There's a lot of uh, stigmas. Stigmas and also, like, uh, forum police, essentially. Just people that go around the forums and they try to downplay anyone that doesn't end up in their way. And of course your opinion gets lost in the sea of other opinions. But I use my... I talk about patch notes on my stream a little bit, but other than that I don't really visit forums. It's a waste of time in my opinion for me. I have other things I'd rather spend time on. So I just like cover them a little bit on my stream and that's it. But like the fourth factioning, as we're talking about, fourth factioning uh, is, is a symptom. It's a symptom of the problem, which is a non-working WDS system, which is people want to get on the winning side, they want easy points. So you have to make a system where people enjoy losing. As weird as that sounds, no one likes losing. I I mean, I don't like losing. I don't like dying. I know everyone's like, Ben Sam, you die so much, but I don't like dying. I don't. It just happens. But you have to make a system where people will feel like they aren't in trying in vain against like an unstoppable horde, like 50% VS pop rolling over your 17%. So you have to give them like rewards for it, or you have to uh, make them feel better about themselves. You can do little intrinsic things uh, to reward people, make them feel good. Like even extra points, they don't even need to mean anything. If you give people a score, a good scoring system means a lot to people. So if you re reward people for doing things that are risky, which you, they'd set up at top here, Rewarding people for risky behavior or for, you know, that does work out, not just being risky in general, but behavior that does work out and, like, making things more overall fun. I know politician, but 
Yeah. Well, there's people watching my stream, and I hope they actually, you know, if they hear about it, then maybe they'll actually talk about it with other people, and it spreads like that. It's not just one person, you know, talking blindly into a screen. So, stuff like this, eventually, makes its way around. The, the better ideas especially, so... And if it doesn't come from the person coming up with their idea themselves, it has more credibility. Something like if I just come on there and uh, soapbox or just type out, hammer out this, this is the way you should do it, your your ideas are all bad. Uh, it doesn't mean as much as people accepting things they think are good ideas and should be part of the game and actually, you know, relaying them in their own words to people. So it does make its way around, even if I don't get credibility for it or I don't you know, whore up attention or something like that. But, yeah, this is like, fourth factioning is a symptom of a poor scoring system. The imbalance, the brokenness, that you can ter term it that, of the WDS system is because the scoring system itself is broken. And, like, the XP system can be retooled. Oh, it, you already do it. They already do it, Pat. It doesn't take that, like, People think I don't. I don't know why they have such a simplistic scoring system for WDS. It's capture and defense. This is it. And there's so many different ways to abuse this. Like I said, they could use the XP system and convert it to the WDS system if they really want this to work. If they want the WDS system to actually be part of their game, they convert the the XP system to the WDS system. And basically, the WDS system just rewards your certs as well but it also has like it scores based on captures and defenses and like you'll you'll weight things so you'll have your personal score in there like heals revives kills that's don't mean anything so that's uh don't but like captures if you're sitting around an objective uh if you recapture an objective in a certain amount of time you know maybe and there's intense fighting going around it. There is a, you can make a really robust system, a really robust scoring system. That's actually part of something I'm working on, or I did work on for my game that I want. I actually have my scoring system figured out. But as long as you score it properly, people will enjoy just playing the game simply. Like, score is just a number. Kills is just a number. Deaths is just a number. Money is just money. Stuff like that, it only has meaning if you give it meaning. And if a scoring system has really good meaning, people will look at it and they will, you know, jerk off over it. Like, people were jerking off over the KD system, which means uh, the scoring system wasn't good enough because it didn't represent everything that was there and they felt the need to um, perpetuate the KD system. So, uh, the like, if you have a scoring system in general, you can take into account people's actions and it already does. We're talking about patch marks, Armors. But you can, you can already, it's already there. Part of it, at least. At least it's better than the WDS system. Most definitely better than the WDS system. And they can tie the two together. I don't even, like right now they have two separate systems. They have the WDS system and they have the XP system. XP system still rewards you for capturing points. Right? It's like absolutely nothing, which should be fixed in and of itself. The scoring system should be fixed, but it's not, uh... Scoring as in the XP system. They should reward more for objective-based gameplay instead of farming kills, cert farming, which is what everyone does right now, which is kind of silly to begin with. Gifted the facility to the venue. Yes. Yes, it was, uh, it was negotiations. <sighs> yeah, yeah, so people see KD as a reflection of skill, which is not true. Yeah, it can easily be manipulated, but if a score can be a reflection of skill, you can make a scoring system a very good reflection of skill. And then you could break it down to a sub-scoring system. One of the games uh, you have not watched me play, but I really enjoy, it's an older RTS called Rise of Legends. Very, very robust scoring system. Very stat-oriented scoring system, too. It had, like, breakdowns for graphs and everything like that. That's very important for player feedback, for players helping to learn about themselves and how to fix things. Uh, but, like, you can go... You can spend quite a bit of time thinking this out, and they really should. It really shows that they haven't. And I'm not begging on Sony or Zoe, but they have to spend more time working on the scoring system and make players feel better about themselves for trying and participating with battles and trying to become more than just a cert whore or farming kills. Um, like Knives. There you go. Another one that should be rewarded. 
getting knife kills on people. Although it can also be abused, you know, you give a little bit more points. Max kills should be rewarded more. Um, size objectives, also asset killing galaxies, especially with people on them. That should be a big reward right there. If, if you could kill a full galaxy or one with like four people in it or five people. You know, that's that sort of shit should just pay off right there. Um, liberators, you know, just like assets in general, they mean a lot compared to just killing infantry, but killing infantry is like how you earn the most points, fortunately. But like stuff like that, they could totally tie together, and they could tie together, maybe they don't want to tie the two together, maybe they want to keep these separate, and there's one person working on the WDS system here, and there's one person in charge of the XP system, and they don't talk, they really should talk, because these two could definitely hold hands. Yep, KD does, has absolutely no meaning. The only people that I've ever seen jerk off about KD are the people that hoard up, and usually uh, some of the competitive player, players were talking about it a lot. And that was back before I started playing, or when I was starting to play, and they came off and jerked off in my channel. Although that's changed in a bit, and I've even, even heard the Soy guys talking about how KD doesn't matter on the Saturday, Friday night stream, so it definitely does not matter. It doesn't matter to anyone except the person who's stroking their ego. Uh, but yeah, the fourth faction, this is just a symptom. This is a symptom of a broken scoring system. You fix this, fourth faction is not the player that just hops on the winning side. It's a bunch of players that hop on the winning side. It's not just like a snowball effect phenomenon, yes. Not just one person. It's not a collusion of people. I see it as a social, it's a social effect. It's something that just happens because the reward is there. There's nothing keeping people on a losing side. It perpetuates people to cause population imbalances. Normalized warp gates impact population. Empires that are classified as overpopulated perform very differently compared to one another, and same goes for empires that are considered underpopulated. True. But I think if you have enough people playing, which Planet Side 2 does, it's not Call of Duty, uh, you can start rewarding people for being on a losing side, which they do already for the XP system. Entirely possible. And, I mean, skill, skill definitely plays in, which is their they're hitting on right here. Skill definitely plays into um, you know, how much that 1% that one person means 0.1%, 0.01%, whatever that 1% means, but at the same time when you reach a critical mass, when there's enough people and enough eyeballs looking around, it doesn't matter how skilled you are because people will just shoot you simply because you exist. Like, you just reach you event, reach the eventuality where population means a lot more than skill does. And it's just, you know, you just have too many people. And reward people, and I think it's not going to off-balance things if they actually reward people for being on the losing side. Timer on the spawn rooms, they just need to encourage people to leave. That's the easy fix. They just need to make it so that people can't earn points inside this, the spawn room. We actually talked about that. One person suggested a favorite idea. Favorite idea that came out of it? One person suggested they put a piston in the spawn room that pushes people out and they can't go back in. That's actually a really good idea. Just put a motorized piston in there that keeps pushing people out. Like one of those coin things at the fair. You just push people out and they can't go back in. <laughs> uh, but really, if you remove scores, if people can't make certs inside a uh, spawn room, they'll leave it. That's the way it goes. People think they can get that one kill from inside there and they just stick around, or maybe they're afraid of dying. You could even make like a rally. See, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with a scoring system. It's actually kind of funny that people don't put more effort into a scoring system. Like, if enough people push out of a spawn at the same time, surrounded by enemies, which you could eventually make, a scoring system that takes into account, you know, like 10 people push out at the same time, or 5 people push out at the same time, and they're surrounded by enemies, you give them like a 100% XP boost for like 15 seconds and it'll make like any kill to get infinitely worth it and it'll make people feel good about themselves I don't do forums adding I'll, I'll highlight this for you guys I'll highlight it just to make sure maybe people will see it I thought about that I do patch notes I do patch notes like pretty much every patch 
Uh, depending on how interesting they are, I do go over them. I do like scoring systems. Really cool thing. Like, a lot of people overlook the importance of a scoring system and how much it means to the game. But in my opinion, in my personal opinion, and what I want to do for my own game, scoring system is the basis of how people treat your game. You have to have a good scoring system, and if you don't, then it's it's all for naught. You're just it's just a bunch of people r randomly running around, and I guess in Plants I choose case capturing objectives it needs to be good. A half lift. Yeah. And spawn everyone via drop pod. <laughs> yeah, you need you need spawn spawn rooms though. It gives people a a uh, beachhead to set up, and if it's not there, then people... There's plenty of ways out of spawn rooms. They could do more, like, with making tunnels and making more teleport rooms. Teleport rooms really good idea, by the way. Uh, making more teleport rooms. There's ways to get people out of spawn, but you encourage them first, and then you give them the means to accomplish it, like tunnels or teleporters or, like, encouraging it, XP boost, and then you give them a means to accomplish the end, which is, like, getting out of spawn without instantly dying. Which is sometimes impossible if they're surrounded by vehicles, but you know, it happens. Yeah. This is a big one right here. Population balance. They fix population, or they fix the scoring system. They'll fix the population imbalance, which will fix the fourth factioning. These are actually all tied together. This one is... This one is the root of the problem. This one is a symptom, and this one's a symptom of this symptom. Which is how it goes. And personal rewards, uh, this ties into the first one, but it's not, they aren't linked to each other, they aren't dependent. Personal rewards, definitely, but if you have a scoring system based on it, a good scoring system, people don't always need the carrot on the stick. If people are intrinsically motivated, meaning their motivation comes from the desire to better themselves, to get a better score, to kill one more person, to push out against all I love last stands by the way push out against all odds and accomplish the unthinkable then they don't even need to give you something for that which is which is what a good scoring system does but personal rewards I guess is for players you know that don't care I guess there's there's some people that are more extrinsically extrinsically motivated than intrinsic extrinsic motivators are like money stuff Extrinsic motivation. This is a psychology term, by the way. You'll look it up. Pretty cool stuff. I love psychology. Intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Autonomy, also very important. Another psychology term. Uh, intrinsic motivation refers to the motivation that is driven by an interest or enjoyment in the task itself, playing a game because the game is fun, and exists within the individual rather than relying on external pressures or a desire for reward, like money. Intrinsic motivation has been studied since the early 1970s. The phenomenon of intrinsic motivation was first acknowledged within experimental studies of animal behavior. In these studies, it was evident that organisms would engage in play for playful and curiosity driven behaviors in the absence of a reward so like you socialize with people just because you want to you join chat you talk in chat because you enjoy it you enjoy being around people you enjoy talking with people that stuff it's not usually there's no motivation behind it besides you just feel good about you know being around people uh you can also be around people for money that's the next extrinsic motivator Intrinsic motivation is a natural motivational tendency and is a critical element in cognitive, social, and physical development, learning, learning especially. Students, are intrinsic, students who are intrinsically motivated are more likely to engage in a task willingly as well as work to improve their skills, which will increase their capabilities. Students are likely to be intrinsically motivated if, they're, if they attribute their educational results to factors under their own control, also known as autonomy, another psychology term. Believe they have the skills to be effective agents in reaching their desired goals. Self-efficacy, also a very important term in motivational psychology. Are interested in mastering a topic, so becoming the best that you can be. Not just... Not just get, you're extrinsically motivated at work. That's the same way it is for most people, Pat. 
are interested in topics. I love this. I'm sorry if I'm boring you guys, but this stuff is great. This is this isn't just like textbook bullshit. This actually exists in real life. This is how we work. This is how people operate around one another. How they deal with life. How they deal with you know going to work every day, dealing with activities, capturing points in plants. I too. Extrinsic motivation refers to the performance of an activity. So this is the other one. There's actually sub subcategories of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. I don't have them, and it's, that's in my actual notes from class that I'd have to dig up. Extrinsic motivation refers to the performance of an activity in order to attain an outcome. So posers would fit here, which we talked about the other night, uh, tryhards. Whether or not that activity is also extrin intrinsically motivated. So money. Money fits here. Trying to get the outcome rather than actually getting there it's like uh the means justify the ends this is going for the ends and this is means right here going through the means extrinsic motivation comes from the outside the individual common extrinsic motivations are rewards for example money or grades for showing the desired behavior and threat of punishment following misbehavior so that's also part of it i'm sorry half life this is just, this ties in with what we we're talking about with the patch notes. So this is actually something so we should consider looking at because this would definitely help them develop their own good scoring system when they figure out what helps people uh, want to play their game without spending money on it. But at the same time, if they enjoy something, they will be more likely to spend money on it. You can go for hard, hard extrinsic motivation like golden ammo, pay to win stuff, but that isn't going to make people like your game. You want intrinsic motivation. Comp competition is an extrinsic motivator because it encourages the performer to win and beat others. So stomping on someone in a game, for instance, not simply to enjoy the game, they're doing it for the reward, say, viewers. Intent. A cheering crowd and the desire to win a trophy are also extrinsic motivators because you don't want to win big winning. You don't want to actually best yourself at the activity itself. You want to win the trophy, you want the girls, you want the puni, whatever. But there's a lot of different drives for uh, motivation. There's tons, tons of them here. That's that's the big one right there. This is one that uh, definitely worth worth understanding. These days, yeah. It's actually fun. It depends on who's telling you about it. And, like, I think... I think learning can be fun if it actually relates to real life and you actually have a meaningful example like this. We're actually applying this right now. Applied psychology is actually a big area too. We're actually applying this right now to the scoring system in WDS. Uh, yep, let's uh, look at the other one. There's another thing here. Maintenance was a maintenance thing. Oh, database, yeah. Eliminate long login times on patch days. Sweet. 